What is up y'all, welcome back. Today we are doing the third in a row, I think, trying new makeup video. We're gonna do the bedroom eyes brown face swatching video next. That's going to be a good break from all the new, 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 because it's gonna be in the weeds and talking about a bunch of nuances of colors and all that stuff that y'all like. But I just needed to go ahead and like get this big chunk of new stuff reviewed and tried on camera and everything. Plus I'm excited about it, you know? One of the things that I'm most excited about trying on camera today is the new stuff from CL. So we'll go ahead and talk about what we're gonna be trying today. So this was sent to me, this is Nikki Dur Roast's new line. So this is all SPF based. CL Tint and Protect SPF 50 and then two of the SPF 50 blushes. And I just think that this is a really, really cool line. If you don't know who Nikki DeRoast is, she's who founded Rowan. And then Rowan kind of got like pulled out from under her in not so awesome circumstances. And we have all been very hotly anticipating her next project. And I'm just really, really psyched to see what happens here and also to show these to y'all today. So the other thing, that I'm gonna be using. We did talk about this in my last video because there was just not room on my face for it. So this will probably really clash with what I'm wearing. Eh, maybe not. No, because this is this is like a nice orangey coral. I was just making sure it wasn't gonna be like cool and warm together because this is quite a warm coral. This is the Mango People kind of like cheek and lip. It's like a very high saturation stick. I think that's why it's so tiny is like it's really packed with pigment. And this is in the shade Apricot. They just call it the multi-stick. So we're going to make use of this today. And then I also have the new Gucci concealer here. We thought it was going to be $37.50 uh, according to Trend Mood. It was actually $47. $47. $47. United States human dollars for this. So like, no matter how good it is, it was $47. Like, what? We're gonna be using that. And then I also got, this is probably gonna be kind of a look. And I don't know if these will make it onto my face today because we do have the mango people. I might use it on my lips and my cheeks, but we shall see. This is the new RMS. These are the legendary serum lipsticks. And unlike everything else that I am showing y'all today, I have not even touched these yet. So these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new lipsticks. For a little context, RMS, I feel like they're in their 2.0 phase and their formulas have just been a lot more sophisticated than they used to be. I've been impressed by them and these look really interesting. They look really high pigment. I'll go ahead and swatch all of them for you when we get to it. And other than that, y'all, let's go ahead and jump in. So I did also go on my Instagram to take questions from y'all. I have no idea what's going to come through. I also have <laughs> perioral dermatitis. It's like a trigger word for so many people. I know like when you say people are like, no, <laughs> they think they'll catch it just by like speaking its name into existence. I mean, it's not contagious, but it just freaking comes out of nowhere. I think that like, I, I talked about this, but like I didn't take good enough care of my skin after hot yoga one day and now I'm on antibiotics for it. So the reason you don't see too much of it is because I have the Dr. Jart, the color correcting kind of like SPF green stuff on it, which the last time that I had perioral dermatitis it helped immensely like it's just very good multi-purpose like it's soothing I think it's got centella in it and things like that but also it helps with like sun protection and keeping it dry so don't judge the products today on how they behave on top of it I'm going to try and kind of steer clear of that area as much as possible because you're not supposed to like spread moisture with it and you're really not supposed to wear much makeup or makeup at all when you have perioral dermatitis but this is a 30-day course of antibiotics that's just not feasible. <laughs> I have to figure it out somehow. So I will be as careful as I can, but I understand that what I'm doing is not entirely advisable. Please don't like admonish me in the comments, please. It's my face. Okay. Starting with the CL Tint and Protect SPF 50 Tinted Serum. This is a skin tint, obviously. And I have it here in the shade 03 Light. That always surprises me. Like I think that it's going to be a pump. And then you've got your dropper inside. This is in glass. It's really like, it's really nice. I love the component. It doesn't give clinical, you know, something like this could look very kind of apothecary. It's giving modern, but it's also giving kind of unisex, which I love. There's something about it that looks like skincare and it looks like any, but like very equal opportunity looking to me. So I love that the dropper actually works. There are so many products like this that have just an adorable dropper that comes with it. And then the dropper, like it seals too much air when you close it that you can't actually get any product up in the dropper and it just defeats the whole purpose. They also sent this, there's a little sponge. So we're gonna use that. Fantastic shade match, like fantastic shade match. Look at that, wow. I think on my arbitrary scale of coverage, I would give it a one or a 1.5. We're getting coverage, but it is very much a tinted sunscreen. And I love that the shade match is so good because that means that I don't have to apply it everywhere, which 
is kind of the idea right now. <laughs> the perioral dermatitis also is looking worse than it is really because it gets worse before it gets better when you treat it, when you actually treat it with antibiotics. So it was really not a big deal. <laughs> and then I started on the antibiotics yesterday and it just went, wah! <laughs> but my dermatologist did warn me about that. Oh, look at that though. Like I have a little bit of like discoloration from some acne and stuff and it does camouflage it. It's lighter than air. It is dewy, but it does dry down. It's like serum-y. It doesn't have like that kind of oily presence on the skin. I feel like it's just, it's pure elegance, which describes Nikki to me. Like she's super fun. Like I don't know her personally, but like if you follow her on social media, she seems like a very fun person. But also when you see her in any of her Instagram videos or get ready with me's or anything like that, her skin is just off the charts. It's just glowing. She just radiates and she's just got the most beautiful skin. Like she has convinced me to buy so many things because I'm just like, I want to look like Nikki Dura. I just want my skin to look like that. Okay. The fact that this actually like gets me one step closer, that's worth it all day long to me. Right. All right. So we'll apply this last here. It is technically SPF. So you want to keep a lot of SPF on perioral dermatitis, but like nothing is good for it. N literally nothing is good for perioral dermatitis. Perioral dermatitis wants you to die. It's like, could you just go die? Like, don't put, <laughs> don't put anything on your skin. Nothing. Let it dry out. Let it not have lotion on it. Don't do like, literally don't do anything and let it be as ugly as possible while it heals and don't live your life. In fact, just go sit in a room, a dry room, and be miserable for the next month until it goes away. So we have to try and live our lives around those demands because those are unreasonable demands. <laughs> I hate it. And then you're like, well, what causes it? And the internet's like, ah. Uh. You're like, it, dermatologist, isn't this your job? They're like, ah. Uh. Cool, excellent, great. Yeah, so I just, I know that like the first time that I got it, it was because I used like a towel that I didn't let dry all the way, you know, and it had probably like, it maybe mildewed or something like that. And then I let it get really out of control the first time because I was treating it with clobetazole. I was like, oh, well this works great. And I have psoriasis and so I have clobetazole on hand. It is a very strong steroid. It eviscerated it. Ha, but keep listening because the warning there is that yes, a steroid will eviscerate it and then it will make it come back 10 times worse as soon as you stop using it because it's actually like that's the one thing that they say it probably is caused by it's like over grooming your skin or too many actives or whatever but really it's like you can almost guarantee getting it if you have overused topical steroids which i didn't i do think it was the hot yoga because that's a very similar thing than you know to using a wet towel you know on my face kind of thing so I think that that was what did it and it should be getting better soon. Just staying on top of my probiotics with my antibiotics so I don't land myself in the emergency room again. That was fun. By the way, I uh, like chugged a lavender latte before I got on camera. <laughs> You're welcome. There's your finish. It's so beautiful. It really is. And it's not, I think that the undertones are really good for me because it's still warm over my freckles. That's kind of a pet peeve of mine is when something has a little too much coolness to it or even a little too much neutrality to it. It'll look gray when my freckles show through and that actually still looks like healthy <laughs> brown freckles, you know? Okay, let's use the Gucci. Might as well, paid enough for it. I have this here in the shade 14 and fair. Let's look at the component. I hate to be cynical, but it's pretty unimpressive. Like this could be drugstore, this packet. I mean, it's kind of heavy, but so is some drugstore stuff. I, like this is not giving luxury to me. The shade range is nice. I have enjoyed wearing this. It works on top of no foundation. It works on top of foundation. But you know what else? Plenty of things do. Maybe I'll take a look and see what like the claims are other than like it's luxury, <laughs> like to justify the price. But I buy things usually cause they're new and I want to review them. And like, there's a good chance that something will totally blow my mind kind of thing. <sighs> So far, this is a concealer. And I'm going to use the sponge to put it on these areas, not the wand. I just don't want to like spread it around with the wand. But, like if I have a little bit of extra on my sponge when I'm done, I'll just throw it on there. It's not a particularly like airtight scientific thing, but I'm just doing the best that I, that I can. Because also you don't really know where all it is. And they call it perioral dermatitis because it's around your mouth usually, but like, I have some weird texture happening around my eye too. Like, I feel like it just kind of does whatever it wants. It's just an evil little demon. It's like, you don't really know wh where you're spreading it to or where it even is because it's like, I get also pimples and it could easily be a pimple. Like there could be pimples around it, like with it, but they're distinct in terms of they're 
freaking itchy. They're so itchy. And my pimples, because I do, I haven't been lately, but I do use so much retinol. And that could be also the reason. Anytime I get like a, a zit or something, it's hard. It's like dry. It's not one of those like wet zits, you know? And these are wet. Like you can, I'm not like to the touch, but like you can feel them and like, it's not a hard thing underneath the skin. It's just, it feels almost like a bug bite, you know? It's like getting stung by like a, um, like a, a fire ant. Like that's how it feels. Sucks, needs to go away. So I'm going to use the CL blushes first because they're really beautiful and sheer. I will use the kind of like neutral, you know, pale nudie pink. I'm gonna use that as my, See, isn't that pretty? It's just like a nice rosy base. And then we'll go in with the mango people. But I'll also use some bronzer probably too. But this is a beautifully elegant formula. Like look how easy that is. I think that the thing that comes to mind when I'm using these is the same thing that comes to mind when I like used those liquid Lurex eyeshadows from Lisa Eldridge for the first time. It's like, they're so easy to use that you're like, it must be easy to formulate something like this. You take a blush on top of a foundation and you just apply it with a wand and then it blends out to this beautiful kind of like seamless serum consistency, this beautiful finish. You think, oh, that was so easy. It must have been a very like simple process developing that. It's like, absolutely not. Usually there's an inverse relationship in that respect. Like if it's that easy to use, it's because they put in the work to make sure that it was really easy to use. This is, I would say like ultimate no makeup makeup, CL is, because look at that. Like that was a good, you know, I think a pretty substantial application of a blush product. And all it did was just make me look healthier. It didn't look like blush. And there's something to be said for that. That's why I feel comfortable using it. And then also using the mango people is because it is just such like a sheer wash. You could get a ton of color out of it probably if you kept building it, but I feel like that's not necessarily what it's designed to do. It is very much a compliment to your skin skincare routine in a way that's just like really flattering, but it's still makeup. I feel like you wear this alone. You know, there's, there's nothing about this that says, oh, now I need to go put my makeup on. It's a really perfect kind of like in between for people who want to look effortless. It feels effortless. It's effortless to apply. It's effortless to wear. It's effortless looking. And again, you almost want to say like, oh, well then is it even really a thing? Yeah, it is. Cause there's a lot of engineering that goes into something like that. If it feels easy to you, it was probably really difficult to formulate. So it also just wears beautifully. Like the way that you don't, cause what is the actual SPF component here? It is zinc oxide 12%. There is no reason that this should behave so elegantly when it's just a mineral sunscreen, but it does. We always say this, but you know, you're never gonna apply enough of a makeup product that has sunscreen in it to be enough SPF for you for your entire day, like wear another sunscreen, but like 12% is substantial. It's not that like throwaway SPF 15 that they love to just like randomly throw in things. This is SPF 30 from Shiseido, but still it's like, it just, it's kind of just annoying because I'm sensitive to that sunscreen ingredient. I have a, I have a personal beef with it, but there's a big difference between SPF 30 and an octanoxate and an SPF 50 zinc oxide. That's still a physical barrier and it's really, really elegant. I am actually gonna go in with the Persona bronzer stick, I think. Where is that baby? I think all my makeup is still packed from the photo shoot, hang on. Yeah, I'll have y'all know. I used the Danessa Myricks palette, the new groundwork palette in the Finding Ferdinand photo shoot and it worked amazingly. Like that is absolutely what it's meant for. <laughs> oh my God, I have all the full sizes of everything. Ah! I forgot about that. I have all the full sizes of the whole collection. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh, life has been such a freaking whirlwind lately. I literally forgot to like step back and enjoy the fact that like I'm looking at my makeup products right now for the next collection. Okay, oh, there it is. It's on the floor. Oh, shocking. Absolutely no one. This is what I was looking for. This is Mojave, the new Persona stick. I've completely changed my tune on this since trying this color. This was just not something that I thought was ever going to be worth my time because I was never able to find colors in this formula that I liked. So this is just their bronze multi stick, but this color is awesome. It's just really, really good. I also really like the other one. Someone told me though, that Virtue from Rare Beauty is back on Sephora. I didn't know it was coming back. You know, I know it's limited edition and Steph told me it was like already gone. And I didn't know that they were gonna actually restock it. So they did, but either way, 
if you want a different formula in it. This is a very, very similar color in Guava from Persona, and that was what we tried, I don't know, two videos ago. And I was just really impressed by them. Really, really impressed. I just think that like color makes all the difference in the world in a judgment of a formula even, you know? It's like kind of hard to disentangle the two a lot of times. By the way, we'll be answering questions when I do my eye look because I don't have anything new for my eyes today. Yeah, I really love that. And they're like 20, 24, $26 or something. Like they're not crazy, which is great. Okay. Mango people. Also, can I just say like when I was setting all this stuff out to try today, like what a pretty color story this all makes, like all the packaging and everything. It's all just like green and rose and like a pretty like nudie peach color, like nudie neutral, like for my skin kind of color, like all the packaging aligned and made me really happy. It made its own little color story. Eager, eager to try this for y'all. This is really interesting. These are very stiff and saturated. And I feel like it had to have been intentional. Like it's a very, very intensely pigmented and almost kind of stubborn, hard to get it going kind of formula. And the reason that that's worth mentioning is just because it is a multi-stick. And so I feel like using it on my cheeks, fine. You know what I mean? I'll throw it on a brush or whatever. But being as stiff as it is, when I put it on my lips, like it is not screwing around. Like it kind of drags, like it really like pulled on your lips. But I think that it translates to something long wearing. So there is that Persona shade guava right there and this is apricot so you can see it's a little i don't know if you can see that but it's a little bit more burnt it's matte -er also it's matte versus the persona so i mean that's going to also change the way that the light plays on it but it is still that really nice kind of burnt apricot color that i like but once it gets on it is decidedly more orange on me than that persona shade and it's like what i was talking about when i was telling y'all about formulating the blush shades is that you go cross-eyed by the end of the day when you're formulating cosmetics because you are literally weighing out like tenths of a gram of a color that could change everything. And like, that's the difference between those two colors to me is that like, it's the tenth of a gram of something like a yellow, like an oxide yellow or something that's giving it this like more orange hue on my skin versus a desaturated coral. There she goes getting in the weeds, but that's my job, that's why people come here, is because I get in the weeds with color. I, I don't know, I just watched Tom's video, Homeless Tom's video, on contours that they tried for, like they tried like every contour on the market, a cream contour to see what they liked. It's gonna be stuck in my head forever the way that they said, if something comes in a stick, then I should be able to just put it directly onto my face. Because I've never really thought about it like that. Now I just can't stop thinking about it. Anyway, I'm putting it on here because it's quite, quite pigmented. So I wanna make sure that we don't get too carried away. But it is, I don't know, I feel like I'm fighting it just a little bit to get it on here. Like, I'm afraid it's gonna just, you know what I mean, disturb everything that's under it. If, but I mean, this is, the point of it is to test the makeup, right? So I have to push down quite a bit to do that. And let's see if it'll blend out with a sponge after that. It will, it's a little stubborn. It's a little stubborn. Now, I bet that there are people who are more familiar with this formula who are going to be leaving me comments explaining why. Like there is probably some kind of preference thing that's a differentiator, like why this doesn't feel like every other multi-stick. Like decisions were made. It doesn't feel unintentional, but it is noticeably different from a lot of the like cheek multi-sticks that I've used. Especially when you put it on your lips, especially when you put it on your lips, there's like not much slip to it at all. And it might just be that it's meant for another skin type. And so it's going to do a better job of living longer on combo or oily skin because it's gonna grip a little bit more. You just kind of have to do a little more work up front to get it on. That's what she said. But I was very impressed with how long it has worn. So maybe that's also the reason. We do need a little bit of powder because we're all kind of like dewy everywhere at the moment. But that also means that we're kind of launching into the other stuff that's not like new today. So let's go ahead and open up a question. <laughs> this is a great question actually. It's kind of something I've never been asked but I've always been eager to answer. What's a misconception about where you live that you wanna clear up? That's actually such a funny question. I'm actually gonna use my ambient lighting powder. I've just been really liking it. I don't know what changed, but here we are, okay. Hourglass ambient lighting. We're just gonna go in with a couple of things here. So I live in 
what you would consider to be kind of the exurbs of New Jersey. And here I feel like, especially New Yorkers, like as soon as I go into the city, people are like, <laughs> New Jersey, you know? Because they've just seen the Jersey Shore. It's like, even the Jersey Shore, the actual proper Jersey Shore is a lovely place, okay? I think that one of the things, what do I wanna do? What do I wanna do, what do I wanna do? I'm gonna contour a little bit. What am I gonna do on my eyeballs? All right, I promise y'all that even though I put this away, it was not going to be something that like left my consciousness, I'm gonna use my Prada 06 palette here today. The first one that I got, we're gonna steer clear of this pink, but I'm gonna use the other three. But I think that the thing that's not what I expected, like when I first came here, and also not what people expect probably about New Jersey is that like, it's so incredibly cute. Like every little town has its own little downtown and every little downtown has its own character and its own great coffee shops and bookstores and everything. It's like, all you have to do is drive like 20, 30 minutes and you're in another one, another great little town with its own identity and its own little fall festival. And it's, I mean, it's just, it's adorable. And that is just impossible possible to find in Texas. Like it just doesn't exist. Everything is so sprawled in Texas. Like you have, you're not in the next town for like an hour and a half. You know what I mean? Like you're just driving and it's just like, they don't have names for the bumps in the road. They're like, here's an oil tank. Now you're in Katy three and a half hours later. Okay. You know what I mean? And you're in Texas for like the next nine hours trying to leave. I just feel like everything is so accessible here. Like location wise. Like I, you know, if I could, oh no. Ah, oh, if I wanted to, I could hop a train, you know, right around the corner from my house. It would be a long train ride, but I could to get, you know, straight to the city inside of a couple of hours. The train doesn't leave that often. So I tend to drive to a nearby train station to do that so that it comes more often. But uh, like the appeal of it to me is that like, I live in this very small town kind of place where there's no, tra there's no traffic, there's no traffic. When I lived in Austin, if I had forgotten to do something, I was screwed, okay? Like if it came to this, I mean, I, my kid didn't go to daycare at the time because he was five months old when we moved here. But when you were running errands and you forgot an errand, I mean, you're screwed. Try again tomorrow, cause you're in traffic. You're just in traffic and like getting anywhere at any time was just so hard. Here, it's like, if I forgot to get a grocery, I can pop in, it takes four minutes and I can go on the way to picking my kid up from daycare, which also takes four minutes. It's awesome. It's awesome. So there's that. And then it's like, you know, I can pop into the city, get my fill of congestion and excitement and convenience, and then come back out here and it's like, <sighs> you know, there are deer and foxes and like, you know, it's just, it's, it's underrated. And also it's actually kind of hard to buy here and not because it's expensive, but just because there's such a finite amount of real estate. It's, it's not like Austin. Austin has so much new construction happening all the time, specifically for people my age that they're just like, okay, this is what a millennial wants in a house. This is the location they want. This is what they want to pay for that house. It'll be a situation where it's like, Hey, you know, come point to the tract of land you want developed and we will build you a house on it kind of thing. And here's the amount of money that it's going to cost. We cover closing, blah, blah, blah. It's very new school in that sense, which is really nice as far as entering the housing market. Here, completely different. I mean, completely different. You have to have a real estate attorney. You have to have a real estate attorney. It's a pain in the buns and everything costs money. Everything costs money. You know, you're hiring inspectors and you're, I mean, and the, just the attorneys that, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. Buying a house is always a lot, but it's just a lot. So I love where I live. I cannot complain. I really, really do. And I think that the big misconception about it is that like a lot of people have ideas in their head about what New Jersey is like. And it's at least where I live, it's just like gorgeous, lush trees and nature and seasons and wildlife and trails. And just like, it's just so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go in with that shimmery shiny shade here. We are only avoiding the like rosy pink because it is a choice, it is a decision. Somebody sent me the new Hermes, I mean, an image of the new Hermes quads today. And they were like, I am itching because they're this mixture of squares and circles inside of a circular palette. And it's just enough to drive any Capricorn, Earth sign, Libra even crazy. But it's just such a poor use of space. It's like spreading out in this 
way of being like, oh, it's so luxurious and it doesn't matter. And like, you know, it's we're, we're using the space as if there's all the space in the world to be had kind of thing. But there are people who are going to look at it and be like, I can't, like this person who sent it to me, they were like, I can't process the color stories because the configuration is so distracting. You know, I guess you could argue that it's a conversation starter in that respect, but you're also alienating a lot of people. But I guess it's Hermes, they're already alienating a lot of people. That's literally their brand. <laughs> That's cute. That's enough. That's enough eye look for me today. I want to put on some more of the mango people though, because it's always how it is, right? You get the eye look on and then you decide like, hey, that blush, I could have some more of it. By the way, this is a metal component. It's gorgeous. This is, component is just ridiculous. Like it's, it's so nice. It doesn't just feel like a, a chapstick or even like a normal lipstick, you know? So I'm just gonna take that up a little, but you see how it wants to like, like that's there. Like I almost wanna dampen it with a little bit of like Fix Plus or something cause getting it to move around once you've applied it like that is not the easiest. Not a jailbreaker, but not the easiest. Okay, hmm. I feel like for all the work that I'm doing for that blush, it's just not really giving me that much. Like I want local color, you know? And it's just not, it's just not doing that. I feel like I'm just making everything look kind of like tan but it's so sheer. Like I'm not getting the saturation that you would expect to get when you put it on the skin. Like it just doesn't do it. And I feel like I'm getting kind of like pink face. I'm kind of losing the contrast between my complexion product and my pigment product, like my, you know, color cosmetics. I don't know, we'll get there. Like we'll, we'll get there eventually, but I am a little bit perplexed by that mega people stick. Okay. I'm going to take another question and put on my brows and stuff. What's your full art history? That's nice, I like that question. Okay, what eyeliner do I want to use today? Ooh, why don't we use Renaissance Gold? I'm really just like working my way through. Yes, all of the Lisa Eldridge eyeliners and just seeing which ones are my favorite, but Renaissance Gold has a really nice kind of base note to it where it's very present on the skin and it actually matches my sweater really well but it has like a really lovely like gold reflect on it too, which I think will just make my eyes look kind of subtle and effortless, but at the same time, it's sparkly. So my full art history, I was, I don't know, I think that I came from a family of charismatic creatives. Like we are not the kinds of people who, we're not doctors. None of us, none of us is, is out here <laughs> being like a lifelong academic or being a surgeon, <laughs> we're not, we're not doing those things, but we are encouraging in the creative space and things like that. Like I was always encouraged. I was always encouraged to, to do liberal arts things. And I picked up a paintbrush or picked up a pen or a pencil or whatever so young. I don't even know exactly what the first thing that sparked it for me was, but my mother is very clear on the fact that they understood, by the way, I'm in no hurry to blend this because it doesn't totally dry down. My mom said that she understood that I had like a drafts person kind of gift because I drew hands really early on. Like I would just like rendered, it was like one of my favorite things to draw was like it, my chemistry notebook, it was hands. Just drawing people's hands. Didn't do well in chemistry. No, I did not. I've always been like a student of hands. And my mom was like, okay, well, I mean, she's always been amazing at encouraging me. She's just an amazing person at like noticing things about people. She's a Virgo and Virgos are just super, they're intuitive about what people need. And so my mother being already a Virgo and then being a mother who loved me very much, she was like, okay, well, I see what, you know, this little girl is like leaning into, like what, what she's gravitating towards. And for me, it was building things. I always loved building things. I've always, Tom and I love to say, I was supposed to be an engineer. <laughs> I could have been an engineer if I had known what the heck an engineer was. Not to say that I, that would have made me happy, but I like have the brain for it. My dad has the brain for it. You know, like I, like math doesn't scare me kind of thing. And I have kind of this gift that I inherited from him where it's like, I can look at something long enough that I can figure out how it works. You know, building furniture and stuff like that, even like things that mundane doesn't bother me. I have a very, very, very high threshold for a frustration on fiddly things. Like I'm, I do my own electrical work. I love to sew and like my, I can pretty much talk myself down from frustration on like mechanical things 
indefinitely. I'm like that person who I'm just like, I can keep my cool and be like, all right, this is frustrating, but we're gonna figure it out kind of thing. And I think that that has always kind of applied backwards in terms of art as well, because it just, it's like, it's so analog. I've never been a graphic designer. It's so analog and there's something really nice about knowing that it's, and I've talked about this before, but it's like something in my life that I can't really optimize because it's about problem solving. And it's about kind of like taking it as it comes and that's just really healthy for me. So anyway, my mother sees that I'm gravitating towards these things and by age, Nine. I was in oil painting classes. My lead professor in college, Carrie Botta, was so jealous when she heard that. She's like, what? You were oil painting at nine? I was like, yeah, I have like the turpentine burns to prove it. You know what I mean? Not really, I didn't like scar, but like, you know, you're dealing with chemicals that you don't really know. Like, you know what I mean? You're just like, they're like mixing some linseed oil, use some turpentine, you use your lava soap to get it off, you know, kind of thing. Like that was all just part of my lexicon so young that like oil paint doesn't scare me. And like, I understand, you know, not just the color wheel, but like the nuances of the different like ores that you use to make paint with. Like some of them are synthetic, but it's like titanium white, quinacridone, uh, cadmium, like all of these colors that it's not just like this identity of like the light spectrum of color, but like the earth spectrum of color, like what these pigments are made out of and like how they behave when you mix them together. And that's like some of the most, y'all know, y'all tag me in it all the time. And I love it so much because it's like, that's the most fascinating thing about color theory to me. A lot of times is when people are like, mixing pigments together and it's the behavior of that specific ore that changes everything. Because if you were mixing light together, it would be something so pure, right? You'd be able to like predict the outcome and it will surprise you, it will be beautiful, but these are like pure colors. Whereas when you're working with things that had to be brought from the earth, they have their own behavior. They have their own identity. Some of them are much stronger and more like willful in a color mixture than another and like, I could go on. I could just go on and I don't even know the half of it. It's just exciting. So I'm gonna do a darker eyeliner right at the base of my lashes. I'm gonna go back in with ground coffee. Or oh, cinder smoke is nice too. Cinder smoke. That's that beautiful gray. Let's go with that beautiful gray, right? Cinder smoke. Oh, ooh, yes. Okay. <laughs> That's lovely. So it was very encouraging to be told that I was like very preternaturally good at something early on, helped with my confidence quite a bit. And also, you know, like I said, having a mom who really believed in me. And I remember like there was a an art festival at my elementary school that basically was thrown for me, which is such a bizarre thing to say, but it was like, I had my own booth and all I did was just sit there and like draw and people just came over and watched. So freaking weird to think about that. And I was like really into oil pastels at the time. And I remember like, I was just having the time of my freaking life, but like I was doing commissions for the school, like for the directory or for like a principal who was retiring or a vice principal or whatever to like draw the school for them and things like that. Like I was the resident artist in elementary school. And I actually, really like pulled a Jeff Mangum, right? Not to compare myself to one of the greatest musicians of our generation, but I scared the hell out of myself eventually and convinced myself that like, there's no way I would be like long-term able to meet the very competitive expectations that I had like, you know, imagined essentially, you know, it's like, okay, well, like obviously you get all this attention for this so young, you're some kind of like, you know, virtuoso or something. I don't know, whatever, like, a, you know, like I had a gift. And then I noticed around me that there are people who are just as good as me who aren't getting the recognition. And I was like, oh, I'm a phony. Like I'm a, a what, what is it, an imposter, you know? And so like getting into like middle school and stuff like that, I didn't go into art classes. I did music. I did home ec. I did whatever, but I did not, I did not go into art. I did not want to. There was just something about it where I was like, I, this is not me anymore. It was only when I went to college and I actually started out as a fashion merchandising major because that's what my mother was. And I spent a year as a fashion merchandising major. I didn't do any fashion classes. I just, you know, did my preliminary stuff, you know, started I was doing all my freshman coursework and everything. And my boyfriend at the time was an art major. In fact, my boyfriend and a couple other friends of mine, they all started out as art majors and only one of them ended up staying an art major. My 
boyfriend at the time ended up going into environmental science and got a master's in like uh, public planning or something. Another one ended up going into like full on freaking science. And then yeah, my friend Aaron and I stayed in the BFA program. But I, oddly enough, after all of the recognition that I'd gotten early on and getting such a chip on my shoulder about it throughout my adolescence, the idea of majoring in art was the biggest challenge I could imagine because I had thus far at that point, you know, in terms of like, of my education pre-college, you know, where like, you know, your grades start to matter and they're, you know, using them to build transcripts for you to go to college kind of thing. I had gotten to where I had kind of mastered school. I wasn't like good at one thing. I was good at school. I was like good at taking tests. I was good at following the curriculum. I was good at school. <laughs> I think a lot of people, especially in the American education system, learn how to be good at school so that you just pass and then you can just go live your life kind of thing. And so the idea of then going in and being an art major where someone was going to put a microscope on my creative process terrified me. And even when I got into the BA, pro BA program, the BFA program, which I did, I need to set this. I'm gonna use the groundwork palette to set this. When I got into the BFA program at Florida State, I shared a BFA space. So BFA is a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts and it's just, it's, you know, a higher level of the major, essentially. You know, it's like the difference between getting a Bachelor of Science and a Bachelor of Fine Arts. I did end up graduating with a Bachelor of Science because I just wanted the hell out so bad, but I was in the BFA program the whole time. I just don't have a BFA. All that to say, I shared my space in the BFA warehouse with my friend Jimmy, and it ended up becoming his space because I didn't want anyone who was touring the BFA warehouse, which it was like a, a social event kind of space, to see the cross section of my process. I did not have a good process at the time. I think I've always had a hard time kind of reconciling the fact that like I am a fantastic drafts person and I love the human body. It's like one of my favorite things in the whole world is like figure drawing. I took figure drawing three times. I love it so much, but that it doesn't translate into art that I wanna look at. <laughs> For other people doing it, absolutely. You know, I'm looking at someone like Jenny Savile, right? I'll put some Jenny Savile on the screen. Her process is one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. She's so freaking talented that I'm just like, what do I have to add to this space? And yes, I love a good two cakes philosophy, sure. But I was not inspired enough by the kind of art that I saw that hinged on what I'm good at to want to kind of like cover the distance on my own to be as good as a Jenny Savile. I just wasn't motivated enough because like looking at it, it just intimidated me. It wasn't like, oh, I wanna do that. Whereas like, you know, when I'm on YouTube, I started a YouTube channel because there were so many creators that I watched where it just made me go, I wanna do that. Jenny Savile or other, you know, people who render the human body don't make me go, oh, I wanna do that. Who makes me say, oh, I wanna do that? Abstract artists. It took me so long to finally just like, I don't know, just I had to get out of my own head about the idea of like being someone who can draw something to immaculate perspective and that that isn't what I wanna do. Like, I feel like I'm almost wasting my skills in, in a sense because I'm never rendering anything. I'm never doing any kind of a realism. My friend Anna, oh, Anna Medina, she does these beautiful like photo real renderings. They're so unbelievable. But I'm like, I like looking at that. I don't wanna make that. I don't wanna make that. I'm just very like, ugh, it'll never be as good as a photo. And it's like, as soon as I'm obsessing about something in that respect, where I'm just like, oh, it needs to be perfect, then I'm dealing with perfection. And I have to get away from that. When I'm making art, it cannot be about perfection. It cannot be about exactness. It cannot be about optimization. And so that is what made me finally just like humble myself before the art gods is like the expression that I've used quite a bit in the past and say, okay, well, I kinda need to go back to class essentially. I'm using a little bit of the hourglass here, go back to class and say, well, what do I need to learn? And that was why I took the class on Artify that I did. It's Celia Lee's class, it's called Be Bold. And she just walks you through her process of abstract art and that was what got me into abstract art and like now, that's what I do. And I love it. Like, you know, if you're new here, I painted that behind me. I painted that behind me like over a year ago, I think. But, you know, I sell my paintings. I love my art now. I never used to want to show anyone the cross section, like I said, of my creative process. And now I do. I'm proud of what I make in a way that, I don't know. I sent a painting 
that I had done because Natalie was like, I want you to do a commission for me at some point. And that's not what Natalie sounds like. I don't know why I did that voice. Anyway, Natalie asked me to, you know, paint something or said that at some point she wanted me to paint something for her. And I sort of covertly like asked her what that would look like. She kind of gave me some, some pointers, some colors, some how she wants to feel kind of things. And so I wasn't sure if I was done with it yet. And then I finally like took some time from it and looked at it again and I was like, okay, I feel confident that I'm finished with this. And I, I mailed it to her. And that was like two weeks ago, I think. And her reaction was just so beautiful and nuanced. She was like, I can't stop looking at every single contour of every single brush stroke in this painting because it just feels like you breathing through it. It's like, you know, maybe Khaki was laughing here or what, what she was thinking or maybe she was frustrated here or whatever. That's what I want. I want to make things that are open to that kind of interpretation that have this kind of gestural style to them that feels dynamic because when I draw something and it is to its like exact, you know, perfection and I've rendered it to perfection, I'm never satisfied with that. I will never be satisfied with that. You know, it's never going to give me any kind of creative satisfaction and someone feeling something like a life force coming through one of my paintings now is something that I didn't know how to get to until I got there. And I'm just really grateful that someone just asked me this question because I'm not sure that I've ever actually trotted out the entire narrative before. And I don't think that I could have truncated it. Like, I don't think that I could have skipped to the end. Like I needed to go hate art for a while and really like hate it until uh, maybe like a year and a half ago before I found where I'm at now. Isn't that weird? You always think you're done growing. I think that that's like such like a human fallacy is that we're always like, well, where I am now, this is the finish line idiots. Okay. I do feel like my neck is a different color than my face and I'm just going to go with it. I don't really care. So the thing happening here is that I don't really like what my cheeks are doing. I feel like no matter how much of that product I put on, it's picking up as much as it's taking off. Maybe that's what it is. You know what I mean, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's bald. It's really frustrating actually. So I need to grab a different blush. I do. Maybe these RMS lipsticks are going to be what I need and I'll use it on my cheeks as well. So this is the component on these RMS legendary lipsticks, legendary serum lipsticks. They're really cool. Like this is like a kind of, it's a nice, you know, medium heavy component. This is satiny feeling, you know, it's like a really, a really nice thing to interact with. It smells like vanilla when it, I mean, obviously this won't last, but that, you know, texture on the top is really just, just a choice. It looks like velvet. So, it's supposed to be kind of like a one click kind of thing. Oh, how funny, the whole component turns when you do that. Huh. All right, let's swatch them. These are gorgeous. Wow, that color, woo! Oh my God, get it freaking real right now. Okay, I already have some thoughts and I haven't even put these on my lips yet, but here we have all the shades. Can I just say, I am not particularly interested in all of the pinks. There are so many pinks in here. And when they're all together, you can see kind of the nuance of them, but they do, a lot of them feel decidedly pink. So we have Linda, Melanie, Audrey, Monica, Miranda, Mickey, Ruby Moon, and Angela. And I will say, it is Angela, Ruby Moon, and Mickey that I think are the most compelling thing in this entire collection. And also, I don't mind this one either, Monica, but I think my camera is really trigger happy right now. Hello. It's very mad at me. Hi, this is my face. There we go, hi. So yeah, I, it's gonna be either, no, it's this one. It's this one right here. That one is just off the charts. That one's called Mickey. It's like that perfect in-between rusty. It's got a little bit of mauve in it. It's got a little bit of orange in it. It's just, it's really, really good. It's like a very good rosy brown, I guess you would just say. And, I mean, and the formula is just really creamy and grippy. And we're about to see. This might change everything. <gasps> ooh, ooh, wait, it's cooling. <gasps> what? It feels, okay, you know those powders that have water in them? That's what this feels like. I have never felt anything like that before in a lip, in a lip product. Like, it, it's, it keeps happening, I'm not losing my mind. I've never felt a lip product that did that before. It's truly like the magic powder from Prescriptives or the Hydro Blast powder, is that what it's called? From Alma? Oh my gosh, how interesting. I love that. 
It feels cooling and hydrating. It literally feels like water when you're putting it on. That is neat. I wanna go ahead and spread it out. I think that's enough product. Oh, this color, come on. No, that's completely new, y'all. I mean, it might not be new to you, but I've never felt anything like that. And I've tested a lot of makeup. I think that there is a trend. I mean, not a trend, but like, there's a pattern that I've noticed. Oh my God, look at that color. Look at it, look at it, look at it. There's a pattern I've noticed where an innovative formula or a formula innovation will come out and then it'll come out on a bunch of different price points, a bunch of different, you know, levels of luxury. That feels like a new technology, you know, where you touch it to your lips and it just feels like instantly cool and wet. I mean, it's not, but it feels like water. I feel like it's gonna be happening in other places. And if it doesn't, you know, I'll eat my words, but like it does, it feels like something totally different. I just wanted to grab a spoolie so I could get the mascara off. I love this. Also, my skin does not feel at all dewy for any of the stuff that I just put on. So I think I'm gonna go in with a powder blush to finish this out because the, I have to say, I'm pretty disappointed in all the work and what we ended up with on my cheeks. So here I have, dun dun dun, -dun Hanky Panky from RMS. And I just feel like it's gonna add the necessary amount of kind of like rusty ruddiness, even though it's quite, it looks, purple because it shifts a little bit blue. I still think that this, just a tiny, tiny bit of it is going to bring this color to my cheeks, just the combo. So we'll see if alchemy happens. I am using a massive brush for this. Maybe I don't want to do that. Nah, screw it. We're doing it. Do it live. Yeah, it's giving fall. And that's just such a reversal from that coral that I was working with. Huh, that was the wrong brush because I just feel like it was getting so lost. But also like pretty impressed with the way that the CL holds up underneath everything. Like I kind of put it through it today. We have lost quite a bit, I feel like, of my actual complexion tone. And I think that that's because I used the hourglass powder instead of my typical Kosas. So I'm going to backtrack and use a little bit of the Kosas so that, yeah, it's not just so low contrast. Cause like right now I do feel like, I don't know, my whole face is kind of the same color and it is just makeup. It doesn't matter that much, but at the same time, like I like to like the look at the end. And I do feel like we kind of came up against it today. I'm just gonna go for yeah, a little bit of clear brow gel here. And then I'm going to throw something on top of this color on my lips to give it some gloss because I feel like everything looks really dry right now and that's probably mainly because of the perioral dermatitis. So I'm gonna start by spraying my face with Fix Plus Magic Radiance. Mm, that just feels good. That just feels good. And then um, I'm gonna do one of these and throw a little bit of a forthcoming release on top of that lip color. It's not spoiling too much because since I'm layering them, you don't really know what it was, but it does really compliment it, doesn't it? Ooh, I wish you could smell it. I wish you could smell it. <laughs> I'm being the worst. Okay, I just wanted a little bit of gloss on top and it does have color. And I think that I've landed someplace that I'm satisfied with. Is this my favorite look I've ever done? No, but let's go ahead and do a smasher pass on these products that were new to me today. And I will tell you kind of as we go, why I think it went off the rails here and there. So starting with the CL, like I said, I'm very impressed with this for exactly what it's supposed to be. And then it also exceeds my expectations in the sense that like, I think a lot of people could find a lot of use in this. It's not too dewy or wet to the point that it's going to overwhelm a more oily skin type. I obviously don't have an oily skin type, but I feel like it's got enough technology and enough behavioral sophistication to it that it's just not gonna get like sludgy. It doesn't feel mobile on my skin at all. And it's so thin and light as air. I'm just very, very impressed with it, especially in terms of, you know, getting the Nikki Duroas like healthy skin kind of look, not the makeup look. It is a healthy skin look and it is actually helping with the health of your skin. So there's that too. And the blushes are pretty low pigment. And I think that she did that on purpose. And I truly think that like this entire thing feels elegant in a way that you kind of almost question why it was so easy. And that's fantastic to me. Do you need this Gucci concealer? Absolutely not. Like $47 where? do they get off? Where do they get off? I'm sorry, like, you know I love luxury and you know I don't mind paying for it. And there was a big part of me that was hoping that this was, I mean, obviously, if I spend this much money on it, you're, I was really hoping that I was going to like piss you off today and be like, no, it's worth it, it's a Marsar. It's not, it's just a concealer, y'all. It's a good concealer, but it's just a concealer. It is just a concealer. From start to finish, y'all, that's a concealer. 
can confirm, no more, no less. Do not pay do not pay $100. Don't pay $100 for this. Don't pay $47 for this. Don't do it. It's just it's just a concealer. I want to believe on this. I want to believe on this because I like the color and I like interacting with it, but I have to be honest with this. The mango people, it's just not a very user-friendly formula. I couldn't get it to build because it picks itself up so much because it's so stiff. And like, I really just want to get to know it and get to know why people love it. And like, I really want to know what the motivation was behind it so that maybe I can seek to understand because this is a small newish company. I think it is Indian owned. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just functioning on memory. And so the colors are really incredible, especially for like, you know, more olive or medium skin tones, things like that. Like, we love to see it. I want to love this so badly, but like, I feel like I'm missing something. Like, what am I supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? Because it's just not, it doesn't work for me. And that makes me kind of sad. Because <laughs> I really want to like it. And these lips, the RMS Legendary Serum Lipsticks, like, while I don't think that the shade range is particularly compelling, I think that like, that many pinks, I'm like, okay, there's eight, and like five of them are some kind of pink. You could argue six of them are some kind of pink. Like, we could have gone, we could have done some stuff. We could have gone Make Beauty, you know what I mean? And just really done some stuff. And we didn't, and that's fine. But like, I would have liked to have seen some more nudes. Some more nudes would have been really, really good. And maybe they will. They do, when they find a good formula, they do expand the shade range in it, and like, we love to see it. I think it's a beautiful formula, especially for someone who likes a matte lip. It's like a more saturated version of a Generation G from Glossier to me. So it does have a little bit of dryness to it when you kind of blot it. So that's why I wanted to throw a gloss on. But it has such committed pigment to it, and it does have that wild kind of like serum cooling thing when you put it on. It's gonna keep me coming back to them. It's gonna keep them in my mind palace, my, you know, my flash drive memory as a formula that I wanna return to when I need a bright lip because it's such a pleasure to interact with and the formula looks really nice on. So it's like when you're putting it on, it feels good. When you're wearing it, it looks good. It is a little dry because it's a matte, so I mean, bear that in mind. It looks nice blotted, it doesn't look as nice as like the Prada when it's blotted. Like if you wanted a true, perfect, blotted matte lip, go for like the Prada lipsticks. I think that they are off the charts, like the best blotted situation I've ever seen and it wears forever, but this is still really beautiful and I think that it, there's just something really beautifully innovative about interacting with it, it's really nice. So I definitely think these are worth trying. Like if I hadn't received them in PR, I think I still would have bought one just to see. And if I put myself in that mindset of I bought this, I would be impressed with it because it's just, it's very different. It's very unique and it doesn't feel like it's kind of like different just for the sake of being different. It feels like it's different in like an intentional way. It feels like a new product to me. And that's, that's exciting. Regardless of whether it's my new favorite thing, it feels genuinely new and that's nice. Oh, is MAC Fix Plus Magic Radiance not just the most miraculous stuff you've ever seen? Like it looks like I had no problems putting my face together today. You know, it just looks like no complaints whatsoever. It even kind of smooths out over the perioral dermatitis. Like it's just that glycerin now. Is that good for perioral dermatitis? Probably not, but we've established is anything good for perioral dermatitis? No. Perioral dermatitis wants me to go into a room and die for a month. That's what we've established. So we just gotta work within the limitations of what we were dealt and that's just, that's just the fact. So I hope that this was helpful for y'all. The next video is going to be the Bedroom Wise Brown tutorial where I swatch all of them all over my face and we will unpack all the differences between them and it's just gonna be fun. We love a face swatching video. We love getting in the weeds on one freaking color. Like that's what we do. It's going to be a study. It's going to be a color study. So if y'all did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up. You should probably subscribe if you haven't already because it's a lot of fun here. Why not? Why not? You're only going to have more fun. Cool people subscribe. It'd be cool if you did. Thank you so much for watching today, y'all and hanging out with me. I love you so very, very much. I'll put a video up here that I think that you're going to enjoy if you liked this one. And I will see you in the next one. Yes, I will, right? I will see you then. Bye.